marketing bullies are out there, but that does not mean that you have to be one in order to gain new clients or expand your movement. Join me and Matt Gottesman for a real as fuck conversation that's going to shift the way you look at marketing. In this episode, you'll learn the importance of embodying humility in your messaging what the real problem is with predatory practices in marketing and how to avoid them, how to use your funnels as a way to create an experience for your community versus just a way to make sales, the real reason why most people seek to become leaders or experts, and how inauthenticity creates resistance. This is a really good conversation and coming from someone, aka me, who used to hate the term marketing. Let me tell you, I gained some massive insights in this episode just by having this conversation that are forever shifting the way that I look at marketing. So make sure you listen to the full episode. Now, who is Matt? With nearly 20 years experience as an international business strategist, growth marketer, and brand architect focusing on luxury, lifestyle, arts, and entertainment, health, and wellness, tech, cannabis, and fashion, Matt Gottesman has partnered and worked with some of the world's most prestigious brands, including those under the Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy conglomerate, as well as the World Trade Center's Association and more. Matt not only has two international business degrees, but also a 15 plus year background in internet technology and all things digital. Additionally, Matt has a reputation for positioning brands for high visibility and scale in the emerging digital economy and has also amassed an army of his own through his digital media reach, influencing nearly 10.5 million people per month, including his Forbes featured podcast, The Hustle Sold Separately. Some guests on his show have included Grammy and Oscar winners, all the way to world-renowned artists, authors, and CEOs, executives representing companies like JetBlue, HBO, Spiritual Gangster, and more. Matt splits his time between his media company, an LA-based music and entertainment company, and his recently launched creative agency, Systems Over Hustle. Now, before we go any further, please take a moment to hit pause, download a few episodes, and drop a rating and review on iTunes. I so appreciate you listening and taking the time to tune in. Please help me get this podcast out to more leaders around the world. And if you have a future topic suggestion for an episode, please shoot me a text at 1781-336-0160. And if you have any questions for me or you just want to say what's up, feel free to reach out to me on social. I am Ruby. That's at I am Ruby on all social media networks. I prefer to live on Instagram and Twitter. So hit me up there. Now it is time to take the predatory practices out of marketing with Matt Gottesman. Hey, Thought Leaders, I am back with another special guest, and this guest and I connected first on social media via Instagram because I reached out and I said, hey, Matt, when are you going to have me on your podcast? (laughs) And from there, we have become what I believe is going to be a long-term friendship because we connect on a lot of different things. And uh, so since then, I've been on Matt's podcast. And we've had some conversations where we found that we're super aligned in a lot of different ways. Um, So I'm excited to dive into a conversation today with you, Matt, because I think that we're going to hit on some topics that are going to really impact our listeners today. Uh, Thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, I even followed you a little bit before uh, you reached out because your content, I came across it and it was awesome. And like, that's the part I love about social media and Instagram and you find like your tribe of people, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like that person. So I already knew I wanted you on the podcast before you even reached out. Oh, well, (laughs) look at that. I didn't know that. (laughs) There you go. Well, what really stood out for me when we first connected, because you know, you you only get like one layer of someone in social media. And I think we can go, we can go pretty deep with what we're sharing and how we're sharing it, but we can't always share who we are fully. And when we connected, uh, one, we have very similar stories, which is really interesting. And two, we have really similar views on, you know, leadership, branding, marketing, 
all those things, which is really always fun to jam on. Um, so my listeners pretty much know my story. And um, I would love for you to just share like just a little bit of your story, just a bird's eye view. So they have an idea of where you started um, and then share where you're at right now. Yeah, I'll do it in the, the best possible condensed way because, <laughs> you know, the story gets gets long. But um, so I've been involved in this world that we're in really since it started becoming a thing. Well, no, before it started becoming a thing, mm -hmm. right? The whole digital and the internet and all that stuff, like the past 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. So really in the archaic days, you know, <laughs> and being at the birth of that stuff. And um, so I, you know, I started really early on, both in the music side and seeing how that could, just like you, um, mm -hmm. an effect because of digital. And then um, seeing the impact that digital was going to play in the future. But mm -hmm. that in itself was a very lonely journey because if you're very early to the show, like years or a decade mm -hmm. early, it can be a long uphill battle, right? And mm -hmm. trying to kind of convince people, um, especially big companies and brands, how we can connect, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a digital world and actually have even greater connections than we might have in a physical world at first, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, that journey started almost 20 years ago. And then there was a radical life transformation. Prior to the radical life transformation, I was very fortunate. I, I, I worked with some big brands like Louis Vuitton, Moet mm -hmm. Hennessy, Krug Champagne, Renard Champagne, um, Dom Perignon, Ruth Legault. Like I was just a digital nerd in their office, the Moet Hennessy office in New York. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, in a very transitioning time in like 2011. Yeah. So it was like, hey, you're that digital guy. Like, can you like talk to us about all this stuff? Mm -hmm. I loved working with them. And then um, after there, it was uh, working with the World Trade Center. And then a radical life change happened around 2014. Um, so everything prior from, you know, from about 2000, 2001 to 2014 was like one life. Right. And everything since 2014 is like my afterlife. It's like my new life. You know, I feel like I'm eight years old now. And um, the long and the short of that is that um, I ended up helping a lot of really cool people, or excuse me, cool brands and um, agencies and all these different people do really well. But suddenly, um, since we're talking about leadership, mm -hmm. I didn't per se like the business people I was around at mm -hmm. the time, excluding Louis Vuitton, Lord Hennessy. They were right. amazing. I was already beyond, I was already outside of there. I didn't really, um, I, I was actually on a plane. Um, and I said, I stood up, I was reading in a book about the five people you were around the most, um, mm -hmm. whether or not you liked them. I was looking at myself professionally. I stood up on a plane and I was like, fuck. I was like, I, I, don't, I don't like anybody I'm around, mm. like professionally. That was scary. And then I prayed and then sure as shit, like a few days later, mm -hmm. one by one by one, they all started being removed from my world. So there's yeah. the spiritual side, right? Coming mm -hmm. in, I'm like, well, that was fast. And that also hurts. like. A bitch <laughs> like, it really hurt, like really bad sorry you said i could cuss so yes, you um, can. <laughs> so because of that change and then a few months later heading into divorce i had to really reassess um life design and mm -hmm. business design and where i was going to go with everything so i took to the internet just like you um your you know mode of choice uh was tumblr mine was instagram before the instagram you know craze yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, I talked to the world, as you know, and the world talked back. And I wanted to really talk about um, entrepreneurship and leadership and where I thought it was really heading. Mm -hmm. um, because we don't talk about these things. We don't talk about the emotional side. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about the relationships or the loss. We don't talk about being lonely. Like, we weren't necessarily taught that generationally. Right. You know, I came from really cool parents and there was some openness there, mm -hmm. but in, in totality, like society doesn't talk about all this stuff, especially mm -hmm. coming from, you know, on the, on the, as a man. Mm -hmm. And I was like, screw that. I'm going to talk about all of this stuff online and we're going to rip like the bandit off and we're going to have a conversation and I'm going to support everybody else globally because that's what I'd always wanted to do anyways was, you know, this digital stuff. So let me support as many people as possible on their journey. And let's have some real conversations. And then mm -hmm. everything grew from there. So there was the HDF magazine. And then it grew into a podcast. I also sold separately. Mm -hmm. I had no idea I was going to do a podcast, but everybody kept asking for it. That grew to millions of downloads. Um, 
and all kinds of guests that, mm -hmm. such as yourself, in various phases, going through very similar things. Like, hey, what I thought is not what I now see, yeah. or what I went through makes more sense now that I'm on the other side. And here's what I'm learning along the way because it's a forever journey. Um, so yeah, so because of that, it led me to a lot of really great opportunities over the last eight years. And I ended up, um, you know, forming alliances with a couple of businesses as a you know, growth marketer. I ended up starting my growth marketing agency, mm -hmm. media companies expanding. Um, and uh, I have no, uh, no idea, no um, ideas of stopping at any, mm -hmm. any time soon with the media, especially. That's some of the most fun I have. And um, yeah, I think it's just important to have these kind of conversations uh, mm -hmm. with the world uh, because we're a global community and these are topics that I think are needed to address. Definitely. I mean, it's like our, we're missing the human conversations that need to happen and we're focusing so much on the external conversations, yeah. right? And when you go through the journey like we do and, and when we actually understand that it is the journey, <laughs> so this is about, it's the journey, the journey doesn't end that's when things really start to shift. And, um, if we, if we talk about like what you, what you do, you know, like as a growth marketer. Now, if you say that, that can leave oh, like a little bit of a, Oh, he's a, what a growth marketer. Mm. Um, so like bro marketing, like what kind of tactics like people make assumptions because marketers, let's face it, have a bad rep yes. right now right? Like super bad rep. They, yes. they, they, they've turned into like the car, <laughs> the greasy car salesman in the online entrepreneurship industry. Um, but what I've learned about you and what I love about your approach is that it's not that. Um, and so I'd love for you to share more on how your definition your version of growth marketing is different yes well first of all for all of your listeners because they know you it and it's the same it's this idea of i hope all of you listening know that like what ruby and i go through is very difficult sometimes because you see all of these people behaving a certain way and you're mm -hmm. like you're using the language, but you're using it wrong. And like, you're taking advantage of people. And I don't want to be grouped in with that behavior yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. But you're, but you're using, you know, sort of certain tactics that you're like, man, like you're appealing to their senses. You're t addressing their problems. You're addressing their, you know, that you have solutions. It's just that I've noticed that it's their character that doesn't always <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. deliver on their promise. But, um, so yeah, so I, the way I look at growth marketing is more so from a standpoint of, okay, where are you at and where are you trying to go? And how is that connection between you and the people you serve? And how are you creating an experience for them the entire way that keeps you guys into a very community-like state, external from all the noise and the way people behave? Mm -hmm. Now, luckily, I already had a tech background, so like, mm -hmm. I already knew about Oh, you do need a lot of, you know, systems. You do need a lot of automations mm -hmm. and marketing tools and, um, you know, lead capture and, you know, all the things that drive leads into knowing who you are, mm -hmm. um, having the, you know, capturing them and then nurturing them along the way. The internet world went, has gone crazy. It was one way in the 2000s and mm -hmm. now they're all much older than us. And it's interesting to watch them still use some of the same right. tactics only now with their millions of dollars yep um including names we won't use mm -hmm. um and then then in the now in the merge in the 2000 teens going into 2020 it's been interesting watching that new breed learn from the original breed and you're like mm -hmm. okay here we go i see still using a lot of salesy tactics yeah and i'm more of like the joe rogan gary v like hey like look if you just want to help people Mm -hmm. Just be really real and authentic and say like, like, what do you need help with? And um, from a business standpoint, I'm very, like, I'm very good at saying, okay, like, let's streamline that whole process to make it very convenient for the people you serve. Mm. And so that's, you know, but that requires a lot of the 
um, you know, the digital marketing techniques in a very digitally savvy, you know, attention driven world. Uh, and yeah, so I, I was always consulting on an individual basis with bigger brands and then it turned into some smaller brands that were in like mm -hmm. the you know, seven figure range. Um, and I always noticed that the number one area that people really tripped up on mm -hmm. was it's like that, look, we all get very busy. We hit capacity because mm -hmm. especially the people who care the most, mm -hmm. the people who care the most are like, I can't do anymore, but I yeah. can't stop. We get burnt out. Yeah. And you don't want to stop because you love what you do or for who you do it for, mm -hmm. but you also don't want to lose why you love it, which burnout can make happen. And it wasn't until I corrected it for myself first. And I said, all right, I went and got help from a couple of people that I said, Hey, I need, I need to automate a few of my tasks, but keep the personalization there because I always want to be close to the people I serve. Mm -hmm. And as I started doing that and buying back more time, I also learned another stage of business about, Oh wow. Like when you reduce time, wasted time, when you increase efficiency, you increase, um, you know, retention, you increase profitability, you know, you maximize your time and your content and your attention with the people you serve. So all these things started changing for me and I'm like, more people need this. And ethically and authentically, and we'll only work with brands that really like, they know who they are and they really love who they're serving. Um, it also makes our life a lot easier. So, um, you know, that authenticity as you, as you love talking about is, is everything because if you, if you're not playing from there, it, it, it won't work. It might very short term, but in a very transparent world now, you're gone like within a quarter or two. Maybe you can pull it off for like a little, little while, but the, the people demand transparency mm -hmm. and help and like, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm with you because I want results, um, but I also get you're a human being, like work with me, help me. And if you can't, be real with me you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I, and what's important there is for our listeners to understand that um, there is a way to blend authenticity or infuse authenticity into marketing um, because the old paradigm of marketing, the old paradigm of leadership has everyone dehumanizing everything, right? Yeah, like that's... everyone turns into a number um, yeah. versus a person that you serve. And this is, um, it's important for us to continue to bring it back to the people that we're serving, but also, you know, keyword transparency, which is something that is so missing in the leadership space, also in the entrepreneurship space and the expert guru space, because people are so attached to or obsessed with how they're being perceived that they just, they, they can't fathom being transparent because god forbid someone thinks of them differently right? right and that was kind of something that we had jammed on just in our conversation outside of this and um there's there's so much power in being transparent especially now like you said like people are demanding it why do you think that we are going through this shift right now um from you know, transparency not really being a thing to there is a demand for transparency now. So true. Um, I, I think people's emotions are running the highest mm -hmm. and everybody has officially had enough. I think we jammed on that a little mm -hmm. bit. I think people have had enough and they're like, look, just talk to me. Where are we at? Here's what I need help with. Here's what I'm dealing with. Not everybody's ready to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I think that it's also our job as whether we're trying to be a leader with ourselves, within mm -hmm. society, or within business, to ask the most appropriate questions. And that's where we were jamming a little bit about humility. Mm -hmm. Because I think the old paradigm of leadership was, I will take charge. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, okay. <laughs> you know? and, then, and, then, and then, like you said, dehumanizing some areas along the way. And, and I think... Part of uh, taking charge really is, let me understand what's going on. Let me understand what's going on with me. Let's go on understand what's going on with my team. Mm -hmm. Let me understand what's going on with the people we serve. And if you can get out of uh, your own way, essentially, especially with what's happening 
like nationwide and globally, everybody's got a lot of emotions. Okay, okay, take a step back. Why? Why are you feeling the way you're feeling? What is really, really going on? And what is it you really, really want? And let's move from there and let's have a like, let's have more of a, a conversation that way. And so I think that that's where we're in a very weird transitional time where people are, um, I think you've got a lot of people such as yourself that have been dealing with emotions for a while and are willing to have very great conversations uh, in business and in life. And then you have a lot of people who this is their first time to the, you know, to the stage. <laughs> and this is, the, you know, a lot more people than normal, right? Mm -hmm. Critical mass. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I, I think that we're just, a, again, because of this transitional time, people who have already been doing the work for a little while, we, we have the responsibility to say, okay, hey, like, where are you at? You know, um, if it's business, what's really going on and how can I help you? Mm -hmm. And let me get out of my way. Mm -hmm. If it's in personal and lots of different uh, topics and issues and social issues and everything, say, okay, let me give you space. Say what you want to say, but I need you to be open-minded because I don't know what you have or have not had access to mm -hmm. in terms of information. I don't know, you know, who you've been around or what's been going on. I don't know what emotions you're filled with. So I'm letting you know, I got the space for you, but we don't allow toxicity. So I need you to be open. <laughs> I need you mm -hmm. to be open so we can, we can talk about what's happening. And then maybe I've also got some really great information and resources that might be of help to you. And we can both grow from that moment together. And if we realize that we can't, I'll still respect you and we have to, you know, part. Mm -hmm. But I think it's our, I think, that's where we're, what we're running into is people like you and I have a little more of that responsibility than ever before. Yeah. And it's, um, that is where we're all transitioning because, um, we also can see more nowadays, you know, like back in, uh, I mean, we talked about this, like I, we were both all, both of us were early adopters of Twitter, Facebook, all the things, um, my space, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and prior to that, how, how were, how did we connect with people? You know, we had our phones, um, we had actual physical socializing, um, we had the TV, but we didn't have ways to connect with people or see things and what social media, as much as it can be like the devil, it's also a gift, right? It's yeah. us with, um, the gift of transparency mm -hmm. you know like now if you say something yep. and you say you didn't say it i can assure you someone captured it <laughs> and will put it out there yeah. oh no no you did right here <laughs> yeah right and so the call for transparency is also one where um if you don't show up in transparent ways uh you're going to get caught, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It, people are going to really start to um, think less of your brand because they've caught you in a lie, Yeah, you know? And so we now have this ability to see what's actually really going on, which is really cool. And it's pushing us in, in this direction of like, okay, we got to start like just being real, being genuine, being transparent. And people are still fucking getting that wrong. You know, right. <laughs> with like false authenticity. Right. And um, we see that a lot. I mean, you've probably seen this a lot in, in just marketing um, people showing up with false authenticity because they think that that's what they need to do to achieve, to acquire clients or to make right. sales or to do the thing. Um, so let's talk a bit about the false authenticity because I think that's really important. Um, and it's also really easy to fall into. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so from a business standpoint, I moved into the niche area that I'm into because I was taken advantage of either, I was, well, either I was taken advantage of, um, more or less, um, in some of those areas or man, it was so predatory because when I was auditing different, you know, companies to, Oh, like you guys kind of have a name and you have a name. I'll leave those names out there. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, Google a few, I'm sure you guys will, your listeners will find them. They were so predatory, like very predatory. Um, 
uh, I'll even say one brand was so, um, the, the founders do know their stuff and they do come off, they can come off authentic, mm -hmm. but the people, but, but I, I can see where it's more about the money. Mm -hmm. And so the predatory practices were interesting because it was almost like psychological warfare. I literally had someone find my triggers. They went into my triggers when I was actually, you know, talking with them and it almost looked like it was authentically trying to help me. Mm. It was making it like, I almost, if it were years ago, me, I would have like caved. Um, this mm -hmm. was like about a year and a half years ago. And instead I was like, Hey, listen, I'm like, I'm originally from New York. And if you didn't want to see that motherfucker, you're about to see that guy right now. <laughs> and that's how, and it was funny because the guy was like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. like it, it was funny because he was a bully up until I finally stuck up for myself. And he's like, let's just pump the brakes. I'm like, yeah, let's pump the brakes. Mm -hmm. You want $10,000 from me for, you know, and you're just like, give me your credit card. I'll put a thousand now. Like it was, it was just, it was very, um, it had its kind of look of authenticity until you start to really see like, oh wow, like you're gaslighting me and you're, and you're being very predatory and all these things. Um, so I ended up having to, since I was like, well, I got the brain capacity, I'll figure it out myself. I did. And then I was like, well, now I need help. Now I'm going to help others. So it, that false authenticity helped lead to a business, um, you know, shift for me, which was great. But I think we're seeing this constant, there are these pressures online that everybody is watching and says, okay, these people here are promoting this, therefore, and first is the pressure of, I want this. Mm -hmm. And if I want this, then my focus is only on those things. And to get those things, it's money. Mm -hmm. And if that's the focus, then um, they think, well, whether those people have it or not, that's what they're showing. So therefore, I have to show that to, you know, be that as well. And um, in order for people to take me serious. And no, I think you just have to be honest for people to take you serious. And if you're not honest, and if you're honest and they don't take you serious, they're not a client, they're not a friend, they're not a anything to you. Like you have to flip the script. Like, mm -hmm. and I think that um, because if you're not being honest and you're attracting other people who they like, if they're attracted to you for those reasons, mm -hmm. you're already gonna run into some issues one way or another, arguments over money, arguments over delivery, arguments over results, everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I just, I think that there's these, these pressures first of what people think that they want mm -hmm. um, and uh, maybe not necessarily being in tune with what they really want or why they even really want it. Then there's a pressure to perform because they think this, it's this crazy saturated market um, when really you only need like a few hundred or a few thousand, you know, clients to really succeed, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then we see like this numbers driven world. We see, you know, fame, we see influence, we see all of these things glamorized. Mm -hmm. um, and what's interesting to me about all of that is, um, is it what you really want? Because with that many eyes on you, there's, I think, a very big responsibility. I don't mm -hmm. think that's being thought of up front. Okay. I think it's just a validation of like, I want to be loved. I want to be validated. I want to be sought. I want to look, be looked at as a, as a really good um, business person. I want to be looked at as a really good leader. I want to be looked at as this. That I, want, I want, please, 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 all of you love me. And I think that that often at times is what's happening versus I just want to really do good, man. I just want to do good by somebody, by the people mm -hmm. I serve and build that way. And so, and then we also see a juxtaposition between we've got influencers like the Will Smiths of the world who are like, you know, genuinely just they've been the same their whole mm -hmm. life growing and, and building and being authentic. And they've got other people we won't name. And, um, and it's all for the grammar, all for the, the content, all for this stuff. And sometimes those lines get blurred and I think people are equating the two together because they're seeing them even sometimes cross into either promoting or being around each other, mm -hmm. right? And they're feeling this pressure of like, oh, okay, yeah, well, if they hang out, then, you know, I've got to do the, those, some of those same things. And yeah, so I think, um, and I think just people are really misled that they, um, have you ever been, found a few people online that you're like I wonder you know mm -hmm. you can kind of tell but you can't tell but you're not really sure and then you get mm -hmm. some some you're like pleasantly surprised but there's been a, a few where you're like you knew it I was wondering mm -hmm. 
you know, you can kind of almost feel it. It's like, it feels forced. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because if something is too polished and something is looking too much a certain way, mm -hmm. you know, um, because life doesn't work that way. Yeah. And the irony is if you were really, really honest and you weren't faking the funk and you were really just like, um, Hey, you guys, like, I do think I'm the best to do this. I'm like, I'm in the game. I do think I'm the best to do this, but I, I'll never, no one's hundred percent. Michael Jordan was paid millions of dollars and he was never hundred percent from, mm -hmm. you know, from the free throw line or from the, you know, the point. Right. So, um, and I think that you have to carry this balance of humility with confidence. Like, yeah, I think I'm one of the best in the game, but I'm not hundred percent. And I want to show you all of that. So that way, you know, uh, you know, always know where I'm, I'm coming from. You, you're never going to be misled by me. You know? mm -hmm. so, yeah. So many, <laughs> many good points there. And, um, what you said about the validation that's on the money, you know, like people go into leadership or they seek, uh, they, they work to be seen as an expert or a guru or a big time entrepreneur, not because they, they want to actually serve and support, but because they want that sense of significance, the sense of importance, the sense of like feeling worthy of feeling validated, of feeling accepted, loved, like they belong somewhere. And um, when you start to do that inner work to find that sense of belonging, the acceptance, the love within it becomes easier to shift that. But I think for anyone who is approaching business and leadership who hasn't done that inner work, who is avoiding it like the plague, they are the ones who are going to struggle the hardest because they're constantly going to be chasing uh, the love that they seek, the validation through external sources, through likes, through follows, through the money, through enrollment, through product sales. You know that They're constantly going to be chasing that until they actually devote themselves to doing that work. And um, we both said this earlier on in this episode, like it's a journey. It's not one that ends. Like, it's not like you find your worth today and you're good for the rest of your life. It's like, you're constantly doing that work. Um, yeah. and that's when things shift. And it's so interesting to see how this is now being applied in like for me personally, uh, in the marketing space, because one, I used to work in the marketing space and mm -hmm. Two, it's just one of those industries and spaces that has gained a bad rap and we all need it. Like yes. we all need to, like we all get to market ourselves and market. How else are we going to get, find the people that we're meant to serve? You know, how else? But now it's become this greasy sales trap that people don't want to do it. Like I was one of those people who was like, I don't want to have a funnel. Like yep. fuck okay. funnels. And now I'm like in my fifth year of doing business and or sixth year of doing business and we're finally creating funnels. Like it, but it took me getting over my own shit and understanding who I am and understanding <laughs> what I'm doing. But to see that there is a way for us to do this mm -hmm. that feels good and aligned and with integrity. Yeah. But that starts with us being in integrity <laughs> with I, ourselves. I love everything you're saying. I love everything. Um, a really good friend of mine, uh, I won't say the name, just out of um, you know, respect, out of being a client. Mm -hmm. Um, he had dealt with several marketing companies and what they, you know, first of all, let alone what they were charging and weren't delivering on that value. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my, you're like, are you, what? You know, and then um, I positioned myself really well in the market, but we took over for his stuff. And even in the first month, it see three to 500% increase. But like, it, you, you know what it was? It was, first of all, it was the details because I, I care so much about the brand and he cares mm -hmm. so much about his brand. And I was like, hey, I'm like, all we're doing in is funnel is just a user experience. Like you love, like you've helped 6,000 people out. You love over the last five, six years, you love doing this stuff. I'm like, I'm just trying to capture you at every stem, at every step. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, um, you know, these last people, they set up a quiz, you know, as part of your funnel. I'm like, I want to get a video of you. Like talking about like, hey, here's what you're going to get from mm -hmm. the quiz. Um, every every route is different. I'm, I'm actually going to be at the end. And I'm going to give you like a whole different, you know, custom experience, like tell them, say, tell them. So I just need you to enter your email and I'll, I'll personally give you your results based on how you answered this. Mm -hmm. His conversions went through the roof because he was just being authentic and he was just telling the people like, Hey, here's what I'm going to do for you. And I, I'm so grateful you're here and here's what's going to happen. 
right? And he's not salesy. He's not anything. He just, he loves what he does. And mm-hmm. so we can flip the script on with the way sales, salesy people were for a long time with marketing funnels and say, hey, like, all I care about is the customer journey and how you come to find out about me mm-hmm. and how I can, along the way, understand what you need and that whether or not hopefully I'm the person that can help you for it and if not that's okay too Mm -hmm. because I don't want everybody I want specifically the people I'm here to help Mm -hmm. because that will have a ripple effect um you know and I've I've had that conversation it was a I was in a room full of uh, female entrepreneurs uh 25 of them um and I said and they're fitness entrepreneurs I said I get it you guys want, I'm like, you all want to help everybody be healthy. They're like, yeah. And I'm like, but you're going one-to-one to one-to-one-to-one and you're probably feeling guilty sometimes that, you know, you're trying to help them, but they're not showing up. They may be paying you. And they're like, I do feel guilty. I'm like, and I bet you feel like it's your programs and you're this and you're that. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, your goal is to find the people that you know you can serve the most that will show up for you for the way you show up for them. And mm-hmm. that's where I think where the spiritual and the inner knowing comes in. Mm-hmm. And the ripple effect from helping them will be their families, their companies, their jobs where they work, their friends, you know, their networks. And that's how you can affect people in critical mass instead of trying to constantly like, you know, just get the sale and just get anybody and try to like, you know, you really want to dial in about who you're for Mm -hmm. so you can help them. So it has a ripple effect. Right. And, but yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting watching, like you said, there's all these, these online marketers are very watching uh, several of our clients have been with other people mm-hmm. and watching the abuse that they have gone through is unreal. Mm-hmm. It's just unreal. Um, but it's also probably why there's a market for what we do, you know, and, yeah. and helping them um, because, you know, they've, they've dealt with people who are like just a number to them and okay, you're, you represent X thousands of dollars a month and that's that. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah, it's, um, what I, I think you summed it up so perfectly when you said the funnel is about their experience yeah. um, because that's really what it is. Like it's about creating a journey for our community to go through when they experience us versus like, let me create all these little touch points with the intention to sell you on this thing or enroll you on this thing because then you're just treating them as numbers versus yes. like I want to lay out a path for you to follow to make it easy for you to digest the information that I'm bringing your way and if it's the right fit at the end cool like we yeah. can do this in some way shape or form and you know when even when I say that out loud I'm like oh yeah that's really nice <laughs> it's not that bad and yeah. but it's there's this, there's such a hesitation, especially with the ones who are super purpose-driven and heart-centered and soul-led and all of the above. Um, there's such a, a, an aversion to wanting to market ourselves in fear of being seen as sleazy or pushy, or like you said, you know, like a predator, Right. you know, like I, I often, um, when I'm doing enrollments, because my stuff is like super intimate, I just reach out to people I like, you know, like I'll create a ton of content that's value driven, but I reach out to people I like and I'm like, you know, like I honestly thought of you. And there's also become this hesitation to that because of the whole, let me slide into your DMs and sell you all my shit. Like, it's like when someone doesn't know you and they slide into your DMs, it's like them coming up knocking on your door and saying hey can we sleep together like that's not how this shit works right like (laughs) it's about nurturing the connections and the relationships whether it is through a funnel and it's your email community or it's on social media and i think it's just super important for our listeners to understand that they get to do this and there is a way to do this that is aligned uh, is with integrity and will be authentic to them you know, a, a perfect way to get over what's happening in, in the mind, because um, I get it, like, we don't want to sound a certain way, like, ooh, if I launch this master class or whatever, like, how does that sound? The, the, some of the fastest way to get results, or the fastest way to get results are, I put up content, and people are like, oh, I'm so glad you're talking about this, and I'll 
do you guys want to do like a workshop on this or something? Or like, what do you, what do you want? Like I, that actually happened last week for something. Mm. 13 people were like, yeah, I would actually love for you to do a workshop. I'm like, all right, I think I'll put a, together a workshop. Um, what else would you want in that? Like, what do you want me to address? Just so mm. I am very clear. So I can also, you know, value my time and yours. And I'm like, Oh, if you could touch up on this, this, and this that you brought up, that'd be great. I'm like, mm. all right. I think that's what, then that's what I'll, I'll focus on for that. So long as it's in my, my realm, right? It makes mm -hmm. sense for me. And when that happens in a small amount of people, even if it's just one, two, three, four, five people, your goal is to figure out how you are adding value in that small capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so highest value, right? Lowest barriers to entry because you're so like approachable and you're just trying to serve them. Mm -hmm. And then once you feel like you've got that dialed in, your next real goal is just to figure out, okay, so I'm probably going to need some type of like mediums, technology, <laughs> mm -hmm. to do this with more people, if I want to do more people, if right. I want to have more people. That's it. Like, that's how we get over Like, so instead of, so we tune out whatever, all the, 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 the marketers and the like, you know, the people with the, the crazy videos walking yeah. in their houses and <laughs> doing all of that stuff. We tune that out and be like, Hey, five people that like, you know, or one person, um, let me really dial in how I'm doing this for you. Um, what did you like? What'd you not like? How'd you like my approach? What do you this? What do that? And then I'm thinking about delivering this to more people. What about the experience would you see would be helpful in the future, especially if there was more than one person involved? Mm -hmm. And that's it. Then it's just, then it's just um, solving for X, right? We're going mm -hmm. right back to algebra in like grade school. It's like, right. I have a problem. There's people who need my help. And all I care about is how do I solve it and how do I use today's technology to leverage, to do, to help more than just so many people. Yeah. Using technology as a tool versus yeah. like a, le right. a, a method to abuse. And um, with that, like just, you know, uh, creating for your audience and community yeah. to serve them, but also that can get, sh people can get that shit twisted too in that, oh, I see that this is a tactic that works. So let me do that. And because I know some of my listeners are going to be like, oh, but that can also be a tactic. And it's like, the difference is the intention and the energy behind it. If your intention is to use it as a tactic to get people to buy your thing or to enroll in your stuff, then they will feel that. But if you are doing it because you genuinely want to create something for your people, there's yep. a genuine interest, there's a genuine connection and, and a desire to serve, they will feel that. The difference yeah. is in the energy and the intention. Always. It's always the energy. Mm -hmm. It's always the intent, right? Mm -hmm. um, people feel you through um, you, through your mm -hmm. energy that you put out and, um, and um, why you're doing it and how you're doing it and, and really, you know, being in your vibe, you know, mm -hmm. that's what people are gravitating towards. So, which is why authenticity is so important because if you're not or you're fake authentic, mm -hmm you're going to probably attract the same quote unquote leaders, if you will, yes. around those things, mm -hmm. which mean you're going to attract the same type of customers. You're going to mm -hmm. attract all those things. It's a yep. vibe. It's definitely the energy. And so, um, yeah, intent is everything. It's like, Hey guys, like here's some really cool things that this might help you. Um, try it. Like I hope mm -hmm. like go for it. If, um, you know, if you need anything, let me know outside of that, you know, there's boundaries here because I, you know, we do also have a company that can do certain things, but if you're doing it yourself, like, here's how I do it. Like, mm -hmm. please like go for it here, have this stuff. It's, it might really, really help you. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, that's it. Like it's, it's just meant to, you know, kind of connect with people and say like, I get you, um, professionally, personally, spiritually, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, here's some things that I've worked on and continue to work on. It might be of help to you too. Yeah, you know? totally. Totally. And, um, again, like we get to do it this way too. Like yeah. it, it, we get to do it this way. Um, I don't know how time flies, but time always flies when I'm having like really good conversations that I love. We are at the end of this episode, Matt. And um, I love where this conversation went because I've really never had um, a conversation on like real authentic marketing that isn't predatory. Right. <laughs> right. I know. I know. And it's so important now. I mean, especially now with the, the need for transparency and um, with 
all the purpose heart driven entrepreneurs and leaders out there who just really want to make a difference and make an impact. Um, so I know this conversation is going to support a lot of people. Um, but I would love for you to sum all of this up in one thought, like what is one thought you really, if there's just one thing that you want our listeners to walk away with, what is it? Inauthenticity, inauthenticity is resistance. Mm -hmm. If like you don't, you don't have to force anything. And if you force anything, if you're inauthentic, um, you're not going to be relevant in a very short time period, mm -hmm. period. That's, that's, that's the bottom line, in my opinion. Um, and because you don't have to force anything, you can actually also have fun doing what you love to do. We're talking about marketing from a standpoint of, you know, some things in the, in a digital realm, but there, you might have listeners who are into their music, into mm -hmm. their art, into writing, publishing, into, you know, yeah, they could also be creating courses, yoga, like you pick it, anything, right? Mm -hmm. If you're really into your thing, um, and you want to share it with the world, like it, there's, you don't need to force anything. Um, that only creates resistance. And everything is about just like sharing what you love about what you're learning, um, being comfortable with it. And one last thing on that part, um, I know everybody gets a little worried about imposter syndrome. Oh, I've been an artist for five years. Who am I like to teach art now? Um, I had a friend who was a yoga instructor, 600 hours of, mm -hmm. you know, accreditation. And she's like, who am I? And I'm like, I'm, I'm your potential student. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you're comparing yourself to an industry. I, I like, I don't know about any of this stuff. You have mm -hmm. 600 hours. I'm like, just teach me. I'm, I'm, I don't know anything. Please help yeah. me. And there's probably about a few hundred other people like, just like me. You know what I mean? Wow. That's a yeah. really powerful right? script shift right there. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't know your world at all. Whether you're two yeah. years in, three years in, one year in, five years in, you still know more than I do. I mm -hmm. I'm a person who says I need more flexibility and balance and meditation for 35 to 45 minutes. And I wanted to attempt yoga. I'm a beginner. I'm your avatar. I'm your customer. Like, can you help me? I don't mm -hmm. I'm knowledgeable. So we have to get out of our own way and stop with this resistance of like, I have to be somewhere. I have to be something. Yeah. No, you just have to be yourself. Yes. Loving what you do and helping the people who have no clue how to do it, do it better. Yep. 100 fucking percent. So. Wow. Thank you so much, Matt, for just sharing your presence and wisdom with me and our listeners. Um, where can they find you online? And I will have these links and more in the show notes. Yeah, um, you can reach me at Matt Gottesman on Instagram. Uh, I answer every DM, every text, every reply on the wall. Uh, at HDF Magazine on Instagram was the original first account. Um, Hustle Sold Separately is my podcast um mattgoddessman.com and uh systemsoverhustle.com if you dare to venture into the you know the marketing and the funnels and all that stuff but if you want to have just a conversation around it i'm available for that too so amazing amazing yeah. thank you and thank you to our listeners for joining me and matt on at today's thought leader where we're challenging you to rise up speak up and create a movement if you enjoyed this conversation please do drop a rating and review on iTunes and share it with a friend and reach out to us on social media and just let us know that you listened and fill us in on your number one takeaway. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on social for that as well. And I will see you back here on Monday for a brand new episode of Today's Thought Leader.